All right, I wanted to bring this inside so I can go over what this monstrosity is and why I'm doing this. It's almost 100 degrees outside. It's Texas in the summer and the humidity is really high and it's fogging up my lenses and everything else. So this is my B-Script setup and I'm going to be doing a comparison today between shooting with the DOF adapter and then just a regular iPhone setup. And so I've got two iPhones. This is a rail system. This is the DOF MK2. This is the Beast Cage. This is a Polar Pro case with an ND filter. This is called the Light Chaser Pro. And I'm using a Ulanzi iPhone mount here to connect this to the tripod. And this is just a plate, so to speak, that has two mounts where you can put two cameras on one tripod. Often I would mount this in the middle, that way the cameras are on either side of each other. But in this case, because this rig is so big, I pushed it out to the side. And then this is a ND filter from Freewell. And this is a B-Script handle. I've done videos about most of these, or at least included them in several videos. And then I did a review of this Light Chaser Pro. But today's video, all I'm doing is showing the difference between shooting with a DOF adapter and a traditional setup. Obviously, this is quite the rig compared to this, but this would really be used for different kinds of projects. A DOF adapter, if you don't know, creates shallow depth of field. It makes it look more like a DSLR. It doesn't look exactly like a DSLR, but you get really shallow depth of field versus using just the plain iPhone, which can look good depending on what you're doing, but this absolutely looks much more cinematic. But obviously they both have pluses and advantages depending on what you're doing, and that's the key. You wouldn't take this setup with you to the beach for a travel video, but then you probably would wanna add stuff like this or other type of accessories if you're going to shoot a movie or a commercial to this setup. So today I'm gonna to show how they're different and let you decide when the best time to use one or the other might be. And by the way, at the end of this video, I'll do a short tutorial on how I set up the DOF adapter using Filmic Pro. I am using Filmic Pro on both phones.
All right, I just wanted to give some quick observations here. And the first thing is the close-ups, obviously with the DOF, look the best, at least in my opinion. And they're the most dramatic and you get the most shallow depth of field. For example, this can opener, you get really nice shallow depth of field all around it. And you don't see any of the edges like you do on the wider shots, which I'll talk about in just a second. The other thing that's great about this and I do this with my DSLRs or my cinema cameras as well, is not only are you getting separation of the object or the person, whoever's in the frame from the background, it can really focus your attention on that. It also hides the background because you wouldn't know that my kitchen is messy right now. But using the traditional camera, you can see how, well, you can see everything. You can see the dishes and the bottles and all the stuff in the background that you really don't want to see. And so in cinema and filmmaking, especially, or commercials, depth of field is really a great tool, not only because it looks cool, and that's why a lot of people like it, getting nice bokeh, but it actually helps separate the subject from the background and again, can hide things you don't want people to see. Now I mentioned the wide shots and the wide shots can look pretty good on this too, now I think this tree shot is a good wide example. You can see the difference between this wide using the adapter. You've got the almost like vignetting around the side versus the traditional iPhone shot, which is obviously just a clean, sharp shot all the way across. So this can be a cool look. It's more stylized. And so in a narrative, like for a movie, it might be kind of weird to have that on the wider shots. In a music video or anything like that, perfectly fine. And so what I suggest doing on these wider shots is frame a little bit looser and then push in and post production. And I actually did that a little bit here. I didn't do it a lot. I only framed in about 3% just to cover the edges because you can see on the edges here, you will see the edges of the adapter. But if I frame this wider, and then in post-production, I came in and pushed in like this. Then you don't have near as much vignetting on the side. So again, that's a stylistic choice. You can use it or not use it. But when you shoot close-up shots, you actually can't see the vignetting necessarily because then the entire background is out of focus, shallow depth of field. And so I really like close-ups using this setup. And again, just to compare the two, that's the standard lens. That's with the adapter. And then here is side by side. And then the very last thing I wanna bring up is that beyond just the shallow depth of field, the adapter adds a texture to the image. And I really like it. It's something you can't really achieve in post-production. You can see it in some of these shots. The image is just a little bit softer, but it's probably most clear on people's faces. I didn't shoot any close-up shots of people. I got some guys on bikes. But like in the movie, No Hard Feelings that I did a video about, the close-up shots of those guys talking in the restaurant just look so good. And so that texture, it's like a ground glass from a film camera. It adds some softness, and I mean that in a good way, and it makes it not feel like a smartphone at all. It takes away the electronic edge. All right, when you first open up Filmic Pro, you'll instantly see that there's a problem. I've got the adapter and everything on. So the image is upside down, it's flipped. That's just the way the adapter works. And so you go into settings, you go to hardware, and you scroll down here to 35 millimeter adapter. And you flip it around and now the image looks good. Now you'll also notice you can see a little bit of the adapter on the side here. And so what you can do is you can zoom in just a hair until you don't see it anymore. That way you have clean edges. Now you could do like I mentioned earlier and just do that in post-production. Frame wider and then reframe in post because when you're shooting 4K, you can easily reframe in post. Even if you're mastering in 4K, you've got room to play. I typically shoot in 4K, master in HD, then I can reframe all I want. The other thing that's really important when you're using this adapter is focus. And so I always turn on the focus peaking. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you focus the actual lens of the camera and within the app. So typically I find what I wanna focus on, go into focus peaking, and then fine tune it. 
you can use the little green lines to really fine tune it well. But you still have to be very careful because even doing this, you can be slightly out of focus, I've found. And it really depends on which lens you're using. This is a Rokinon 24 millimeter lens. And for me, it's worked the best out of all the different ones I've tried. And then in Filmic Pro for all these shots I did here, I shot in flat. This is part of the cinematographer kit. I shot flat for this comparison because it's less post-production work in the end. So of course you could shoot log or natural, whatever you prefer. And then I shot 4K, 24 frames per second. All right, well, what do you guys think? I haven't really seen a side-by-side -side comparison done like this. And so I found it to be really interesting. And for certain kind of things like movies or commercials or music videos, I think it's actually really great. And the more I've worked with this now, the easier I found it to use. It does take practice. I'll tell you that right now. By the way, I did a recent podcast interview with the founder of Bscript, Badam Chalinko. So I'll put a link to that in the description. You should check that out. And if you don't already, please subscribe to the podcast. But for those of you looking to add shallow depth of field like this to your smartphone footage, the Vscript DOF Mark II is really pretty great. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.